On the day of our wedding, my newlywed wife ruined the meticulously planned ceremony. All because her lapdog brought a woman who bore a striking resemblance to her. The woman smirked provocatively at my wife and said, Kelly, thank you for taking care of Dick all these years. In a fit of rage, my wife lost control and engaged in a physical altercation with this woman. The scene erupted into chaos. There I stood on the stage, holding the wedding ring, feeling utterly alone. The spectacle made me feel like an outsider. Chapter 1 The long-awaited wedding turned into a chaotic spectacle. Kelly, my childhood sweetheart and now my newlywed wife. Unable to bear being constantly surrounded by Dick, who always licked up to her, she brought a woman who bore a striking resemblance to her to the wedding. She couldn't even focus on our vows. She directly lifted her dress from the stage and jumped down, rushing towards Dick, staring intensely at the woman's face. Even the heavy bridal makeup couldn't conceal her astonishment. Dick, what does this mean? Dick, who had always pampered and coddled her, now had a cold expression. Kelly, this is my girlfriend Nan. We came here to bless your happy marriage. The woman named Nan smiled at Kelly and said, Kelly, thank you for taking care of Dick all these years. She leaned her head on Dick's shoulder and taunted, after all, these years, Dick has always treated you as my substitute. Kelly's face turned pale. Dick, is what she said true? You treated me as her substitute, so all these years, you've been at my beck and call, enduring my insults and abuse? Dick avoided her condemning gaze. I'm sorry, I messed up on that part, but you've humiliated me many times in the past few years, so we're even, aren't we? All the guests, including myself on the stage, stared in disbelief at the three of them. The music at the wedding had disappeared at some point. Everyone could clearly hear their entanglement. Well, well, Dick, you've really outdone yourself. With tear-filled eyes, Kelly raised her hand, and Dick closed his eyes. But in the next moment, Nan grabbed Kelly's wrist. Kelly, Dick is my boyfriend now, not your lapdog. Please show him some respect. Kelly, who already had a bad temper, couldn't tolerate such provocation. She threw away her bouquet and started fighting with Nan. Slaps and hair pulling ensued. What was supposed to be a beautiful wedding turned into a scene of two angry women brawling. Guests looked on in astonishment, whispering to each other. My parents and Kelly's parents were livid, their faces turning purple. Security. Where is security? Why aren't they intervening? Finally snapping out of my days, I tried to stop Kelly, who had lost her sanity. Kelly, calm down. But little did I expect her to turn her head, her eyes bloodshot, and angrily shout at me, get lost. In the next moment, she forcefully pushed me away, and my head slammed hard into a pillar. In the split second before everything went black, all I could think was. Kelly, do you still remember that today is our wedding day? Chapter 2 If I were to say that Kelly and I had a peaceful and uneventful love story, then Dick's role in her life was that of an adoring lapdog, only to discover in the end that he saw her as nothing more than a substitute for his true love. On one side, there was a calm childhood romance, and on the other, a tumultuous pursuit of another man. It's clear which one is more dramatic. Actually, Kelly wasn't like this when Dick first appeared in front of us. In those days, she was extremely cold and impatient towards him. She claimed to despise the tricks of possessive lovers, so she vowed to never spare a glance at Dick. I believed her. But at that time, I never could have imagined that years later, Kelly would ruin our wedding for this lapdog she had once dismissed. And I, confident in the bond we had grown up with, disregarded Dick completely, never considering him a threat. And yet, here I am today, tripping and falling so hard. Two families torn apart, my wife, in front of the entire city's media, jealous over another man. Treading upon my dignity and that of my family. The price I've paid is truly excruciating. My heart is made of flesh, it can feel pain and discomfort too. Therefore, I've decided to let go of Kelly, and to let go of myself. This marriage, let's not go through with it. After waking up in the hospital, I looked at Kelly, still wearing her disheveled wedding dress, gathered around me, and calmly uttered those words. Chapter 3 Her expression changed, and she hurriedly rushed to my bedside, grabbing my hand. Chuck, I messed up today, I'm sorry, 
but can you please not say such things? We've already obtained the marriage certificate. I just felt incredibly exhausted. Then let's go to the Civil Affairs Bureau and register for a divorce. No, please don't. She shook her head desperately. But I hesitated, looking towards Dick, who was contemplating whether or not to come into the hospital room, and asked. Why not? Dick is still waiting for you. Kelly's hand trembled, her eyes shimmering. No, Chuck, believe me, the person I love is you. Forget it. If your idea of love is ruining my wedding in front of the whole city, then you can save that kind of love for someone else. I interrupted Kelly's words with disappointment. But at that moment, Dick burst into the room, defending Kelly. Chuck! How can you say that? You know very well how much Kelly loves you. No matter how much I pursued her, in the end, she chose to marry you. A trace of jealousy flickered in his eyes, and his expression seemed to accuse me of not cherishing what I had. How ridiculous. What right does Dick have to accuse me? He was the third party who had intervened in Kelly's and my relationship for three years. During my wedding, he deliberately brought another woman to provoke Kelly. If anyone thinks it was unintentional, who would believe it? I sneered, and Kelly's face was filled with hurt. She held onto the hem of her wedding dress tightly. This wedding dress was specially customized for Kelly by a famous European designer, and I had put in a lot of effort to arrange it. But now, the pristine white gown was damaged, stained with blemishes. Just like our relationship, it had finally reached this unhappy ending. Kelly met my gaze, fixated on her ruined wedding dress, and only then did she realize what she had done today. She bit her lip, covering her face, and sobbed uncontrollably. Chapter 4 Even though both families tried their best to suppress the news of Kelly's jealousy towards another man in front of everyone, it still leaked out. In no time, young Master Smith with the grassland on his head became a popular internet meme. The company's stock prices dropped to varying degrees. To salvage everything, I'd been working overtime at the company recently. Kelly called me multiple times and sent several messages, but I didn't have the time to pay attention to them. Her best friend messaged me. Chuck, are you really so heartless to completely cut ties with Kelly? She's been drowning her sorrows in alcohol lately because of the divorce situation. Following that was a video of Kelly, completely intoxicated under the colorful lights of a bar. In the video, she kept sobbing and apologizing, calling out my name. Her friend sent another voice message. We've scolded Kelly already. She knows she was wrong. She's always been impulsive and easily angered since she was young, and you know that. It's all that Dick's fault. He came to the wedding venue for no reason, and Kelly couldn't just let it slide. I pondered on it. You two have known each other since childhood, it shouldn't lead to a dead end just because of this, right? She also shared the location of the bar. Come and pick up Kelly quickly. Besides you, no one else can take her away now. I rubbed my temples and sighed. Looking at my watch, it was already late. It wasn't safe for her to be outside, heavily intoxicated at this hour. I thought for a moment, then grabbed my jacket and drove to the bar. However, before I could even get out of the car, I saw Dick supporting the drunken Kelly as they walked out of the bar. Kelly, who was swaying, clung to Dick like a koala. She squinted at him, suddenly realizing something. Oh, it's you, Dick? Dick looked at her tenderly. Yes, it's me. I came to pick you up and take you home. Kelly giggled for a moment, then pushed him away abruptly. I don't want you to pick me up. I want Chuck. You're a bad person, you're just using me as a substitute. She accused Dick, her voice gradually becoming more aggrieved. Everyone laughs at you for being a lapdog, and you don't even explain yourself. Were you waiting for me to get married so you could bring that woman in front of me and humiliate me? I know, you want to retaliate against me, to retaliate against my superior attitude towards you. I've always looked down on you. Chapter 5 Dick stepped forward to support her swaying body. Yes, I wanted to retaliate against you, to see how the rich young lady falls from her high horse. His face was full of suppressed emotions. 
Kelly, in the past three years, at first, I did see you as a substitute, but I pursued you with my genuine feelings. You treated me like trash, and I dreamed of making you experience the suffering I've endured all these years. Dick's eyes turned red. But on the day of the wedding, seeing you lose control, I softened. Kelly, whether it's true love or not, don't you realize it at all? Kelly stared at him blankly. Dick. Nan was my senior in the past, I admit, I had a crush on her, but she was so distant from me. Only you, Kelly, only you received my wholehearted devotion. Tears welled up in her eyes as she covered her mouth. Are you telling the truth? Dick nodded. Kelly couldn't hold back anymore and threw herself into his arms. They held each other tightly and then kissed passionately. Onlookers cheered for this affectionate couple. And I, like an outsider watching a play, slowly approached the couple in love. They were so engrossed that they didn't even notice my arrival. Kelly's best friend looked at me awkwardly. Chuck. Dick just happened to run into us. I chuckled at myself. I felt like a complete fool for worrying about Kelly just moments ago. Yes, she still had this loyal lapdog Dick by her side. Why should I be here to make a fool of myself? Kelly. I calmly called her name. Kelly emerged from Dick's embrace, and her hazy gaze became clearer upon seeing me. She panicked and broke free from Dick's arms. Chuck, I. I shook my head. No need to explain. Tomorrow is a workday, 9.30 a.m., I'll be waiting for you at the Civil Affairs Bureau. Chuck. She saw the firmness in my tone and anxiously reached out to hold my hand. Chuck, we've already obtained the marriage certificate. I am your wife. We can have another wedding ceremony. This time, let me handle the preparations, okay? Don't be stubborn, divorce isn't that simple. I looked at Dick, who had a gloomy expression. But just now, you were passionately kissing him. At that moment, did you consider yourself my wife? Kelly's face turned pale, and her lips trembled. I. I was drunk. Ah, so it turns out that when women make mistakes, they use alcohol-induced behavior as a cover-up. Chapter 6 I didn't say anything and turned away, ignoring Kelly's pursuit and calls behind me. Dick held her back. Kelly, look at me. Chuck doesn't love you as much as I do. He doesn't trust you. There was a moment when I wanted to stop their argument. How could I trust Kelly anymore? In these three years that Dick has been clinging to Kelly. I watched as Kelly went from being cold and indifferent towards him to feeling sorry for him. He was like a thorn stuck in my throat, unable to swallow or spit out. I did notice Kelly's heart wavering between me and him. But because I trusted her too much, trusted our childhood connection, that's why we ended up here today. And now Dick thinks I don't trust Kelly? How ridiculous. Do they really think that just because they slept together and got caught in the act, I have the qualification to ask for a divorce? Or should I just endure their ambiguous relationship filled with suspicion for the rest of my life? My fists clenched. I took a deep breath, trying to calm myself down. Forget it, why should I bother with Dick and his mistress? He just wants to provoke me, to make me fight with him, to see me break down because of Kelly's behavior. But I have my pride. I will never fight with another man over a woman, making a spectacle of myself. Back at home, I looked at the continuous calls from Kelly, and I simply disconnected them all. I sent her a message. Tomorrow, 9.30 a.m., meet at the Civil Affairs Bureau. Then I turned off my phone. Chapter 7 The next day, as expected, I waited in front of the Civil Affairs Bureau for the entire morning, but Kelly never showed up. Instead, I received a call from my mother, come back home quickly, Kelly is here. I rushed back home. As soon as I entered the house, I knew why my mother had called me back. There she was, kneeling stiffly in our living room, in front of my parents. Uncle, aunt, it's all my fault. I was impulsive and ruined the wedding. But I love Chuck, and now he wants to divorce me. Can you please persuade him? I don't want to divorce him, I want to spend my life with him. Kelly also grew up under the watchful eyes of my parents. 
How could my parents blame her when she was kneeling like this in front of them? This is moral blackmail. Suddenly, a wave of anger surged within me, and I rushed over to pull her up. What are you doing here? Seeing me return, Kelly's eyes lit up with a hint of surprise, and she hugged me tightly. Chuck. You're back. I. I came here to apologize and seek forgiveness from uncle and aunt. I have already contacted a new wedding planning company and made plans for our honeymoon. Look, we can go to Northern Europe to see the Northern Lights first, and then go diving in Australia. Disgusting, it's utterly disgusting. How could she be kissing Dick last night and come to my house today talking about all this? Is it because I've been too accommodating to her in the past that she feels so confident? I pushed her out of the door and warned her coldly, Kelly, I won't forget what happened last night. Since you're unwilling to go to the Civil Affairs Bureau, then I will file for divorce. I pushed Kelly out of the door. She seemed taken aback by my sudden rough treatment. Her face filled with disbelief. Chuck, Chuck. She shouted my name loudly. I made a mistake because I was drunk. Can't you just let it go? I swear, before last night, there was nothing between me and Dick. Can't you forgive me this one time? I looked at her coldly, sorry, I'm petty-minded. I won't forgive you. Stop disturbing my parents. I don't think you want your parents and mine to lose their friendship, do you? Kelly's face turned pale, but she remained stubborn. I won't leave unless you're willing to forgive me. Then suit yourself. I slammed the door shut. Chapter 8 During dinner, my mom glanced out the French window. Kelly is still out there, should we? My dad interrupted her in a deep voice, don't meddle in the kids' affairs. I followed their gaze and saw Kelly sitting in our backyard, hugging her knees. There was no sign of her giving up. The sky was filled with dark clouds, and it soon started pouring rain. Kelly looked up at the sky blankly, then turned her gaze towards me inside the house. She was completely drenched, like a drowned rat. Has Kelly ever looked so miserable before? She's the pampered princess of her family, their cherished treasure. Always dressed impeccably, she would always stand out in a crowd. But now, her carefully styled hair was a mess from the rain, and her clothes were soaked, presenting a pitiful sight. She locked eyes with me through the French window. I instinctively touched my heart and realized it was calm. It seems that I won't feel heartache or flutter because of her anymore. Perhaps understanding my indifferent expression, Kelly bit her lip, and her eyes started turning red. What is she still begging for? Her concern for me? There is a pavilion in the yard where she could seek shelter from the rain, but she insists on getting herself completely soaked. It's just her attempt to soften my heart. But I won't, I won't ever again. My mom couldn't bear to watch and went to the kitchen to clean up. My dad sighed, this can't go on like this. Shouldn't we let her come in to take shelter from the rain? I shook my head gently, no need. Then, right in front of Kelly, I dialed Dick's number. Chapter 9 Dick arrived quickly at the gate of my villa. I used the electronic switch to open the gate and let him in. However, he wasn't alone. He brought that woman named Nan with him. As soon as Kelly saw Dick, she pursed her lips and finally let her tears fall, taking a few steps towards him. But when she saw Nan behind Dick, her expression instantly changed. The pouring rain drowned out their conversation. I saw Dick trying to reach out and pull Kelly towards him. But she, as if feeling a tremendous betrayal, forcefully pushed his hand away and ran out. Dick hesitated for a moment then immediately raised his umbrella and chased after Kelly. Leaving Nan drenched in the rain. Watching this scene, a mocking smile unconsciously appeared on my lips. However, in the next moment, Nan turned around. Despite being soaked by the rain, there was no sign of panic on her face. She locked eyes with me for two seconds, then smiled and walked up the steps, knocking on the door. I pondered for two seconds and decided to open the door for her. I'm Nan. We met on the day of your wedding. Do you mind if I take shelter from the rain at your house? To be honest, I didn't have much animosity towards her. Compared to the love-hate entanglement between Dick and Kelly. 
she, the so-called white moonlight, seemed more like a pawn. Especially just now, when Dick unhesitatingly left her alone to chase after Kelly, it made me feel a bit sorry for her. But I didn't expect Nan to seemingly see through my thoughts. Do you think I'm pitiful? She asked with a smile while wiping her drenched hair with a towel. I suddenly realized that Dick and Kelly are quite compatible. I hope you don't mind me saying that. I shrugged. What is there to mind? Chapter 10 The moment I minded the most, Kelly didn't care about my pleas either and continued to be entangled with Dick. Nan looked at me, a hint of guilt flashing across her face. I'm sorry for ruining your wedding. Now I can reminisce about that chaotic wedding with a calm and peaceful mind. I shook my head, misfortune may be a blessing in disguise. If the wedding had proceeded as planned that day, I wouldn't have known about any infidelity. Thinking about Kelly and Dick shamelessly kissing outside the bar. I now feel that it was a good thing the wedding didn't go through. But divorce proceedings can be a bit troublesome. We shouldn't have gotten the certificate before the wedding in the first place. Nan suddenly sighed, looking at the rain outside, and started to tell me about her past with Dick. Speaking of which, even now, I can't figure out what kind of relationship I have with Dick. He's the kid from my neighbor's house, always clinging to me since we were young. People would tease us, calling us siblings. It wasn't until I went abroad and heard from friends that Dick had secretly loved me all along. She chuckled self-deprecatingly, I only found out that he had been involved with another woman for three years, and this woman looks a lot like me. He said he just missed me too much, so he found a substitute to pour his emotions into. How ridiculous is that? In that moment, I suddenly realized. Nan is also a victim. A victim in the nauseating relationship between Dick and Kelly. To be honest, I was angry at Dick for leaving me earlier. He's already an ex-boyfriend in my heart, but I couldn't swallow that. She quickly hid her disappointed expression and instead looked at me, what about you, Chuck? Are you willing to let them off the hook? I remained silent. She smiled softly, let's team up and get revenge on them together, shall we? Chapter 11 Soon enough, I knew what Nan's revenge plan was. She copied the surveillance footage from the cameras at home, capturing a moment of intense passion between Kelly and Dick, and brought it to me directly. As it turns out, on that rainy day, Kelly ended up going back to Dick's house. Perhaps out of sadness or disappointment, Kelly lost control under Dick's comforting words. They quickly embraced each other, crossing that boundary. I turned off the video. Nan saw my expression unchanged before saying, I brought this to you because I heard that Kelly is now unwilling to proceed with the divorce. With this, maybe things will take a new turn. You need to get divorced from Kelly first so that I can proceed with my revenge. I finally realized. On that rainy day, you intentionally sought refuge in my house, didn't you? She deliberately didn't follow them to give Dick and Kelly space, so she could catch them red-handed in their affair. To be able to plan her revenge in just a few minutes after being dumped by her boyfriend. Nan, this woman, is truly terrifying. She smirked cunningly, does it matter if it was intentional? What matters is that I obtained evidence that is advantageous to us, isn't it? Who allowed Dick to live in my house and dare to bring another woman there? This is the retribution he deserves. I looked at her and suddenly said. How could Dick see Kelly as your substitute? You are you, and she is she. You two are completely different people. Kelly is a spoiled little girl who only knows how to hurt those who love her with her tears. Nan, on the other hand, is much more resourceful. If she really wanted to compete for Dick, a hundred Kellys wouldn't be enough to compare to her. Chapter 12 Considering the relationship with Kelly's family, I didn't follow Nan's suggestion to publicly expose the video. However, I did show the video to Kelly's father. Ironically, Kelly was already living with Dick, yet she continued to hide it from her family. They were even planning to have a wedding ceremony at home. It wasn't until I played the video for Kelly's father that he found out what his beloved daughter had been up to. Seeing his pale face, I said, Uncle, let's put an end to my marriage with Kelly. I don't want things to end in an ugly confrontation, but she has been dragging her feet and refusing to divorce me. 
I'd appreciate it if you could talk some sense into her. Then I left a divorce agreement and bid farewell. I don't know how Kelly's father confronted her about the video. Regardless, a month later, I finally got my divorce papers as I had wished. Kelly wore sunglasses, her face expressionless, showing no sign of the remorseful girl who had begged me for forgiveness before. Dick had his arm around her shoulder the whole time, as if proclaiming his victory, looking at me with arrogance and provocation. It seemed that Kelly's father hadn't told her about the video. I had no desire to engage with these two. Ever since I saw them naked, embracing each other in the video, Kelly's image in my heart had plummeted. The girl I once cherished and treated delicately, afraid of startling her with a tight hug. But she didn't value herself and easily handed herself over to another man. I had nothing more to say to them. Just as the divorce papers were about to be stamped, Kelly called out to me. She took off her sunglasses and raised her chin. Chuck, you still have a chance to regret now. Regret? I only hoped that she wouldn't have any regrets. I directly told the staff, please hurry up, I have other things to attend to. Seeing this, Kelly bit her lip and stubbornly put her sunglasses back on. The moment I received the divorce papers, Dick held Kelly's face and kissed her forcefully. Then he smiled at me and said, Chuck, Kelly is finally mine. He looked as if he were a triumphant general returning from a victorious battle. I scoffed. Well, I wish you both a hundred years of happiness. Let this fool bask in his glory for a few days. Chapter 13 After receiving the divorce papers, Kelly seemed to have completely given up. She simply moved in with Dick. And every day, they would post lovey-dovey photos on social media. I saw through this shallow act of hers at a glance. She was doing it on purpose to show off to me. But what's the point of this show of affection? Does she even know that the house she's living in with Dick is under Nan's name? Nan's revenge tactics were quite intense and brutal. Upon learning that I successfully divorced Kelly and officially announced the dissolution of ties with the Kelly family on Smith Corporation's official account, she posted the video of Dick and Kelly on Dick's company platform and her own social media accounts. She even kindly censored Kelly's face but left Dick completely exposed. It was a massive public humiliation. Dick was originally working as a designer in a top advertising design company. He was competing with his colleagues for the position of design director. Due to this video, he got embroiled in a scandal, losing the opportunity to become the director. To make matters worse, someone exposed that the project proposal he presented during his interview was plagiarized. As a result, he was fired from the company. At the same time, Nan swiftly dealt with the properties under her name. She directly had someone throw all of Dick and Kelly's belongings downstairs. Dick had the audacity to approach the property management, but they shut him down. The property management said, are you the owner here? If not, stop complaining. Dick immediately shut his mouth and left with his belongings, looking dejected. He had to find another place to live. Now he lost his job and is living in a cramped little apartment. He deserves it. Who told him to use me? Nan's words were filled with satisfaction. After handling the properties, she was ready to go abroad again. Before leaving, she came over to inform me about Dick's fate. I smiled and handed her my assistant's business card. Kelly, I admire your decisive personality and strong execution. If you ever want to come back to China for career development, you can consider joining my company. She chuckled warmly. Took the business card from me. I hope to have the opportunity to work with Chuck in the future, but for now, I want to explore the world. Nan bid me farewell. Chapter 14 In the days that followed, news about Kelly and Dick would occasionally reach me. It was said that Kelly, in a fit of anger after our divorce, brought Dick home with her. Defiantly challenging her father, she declared her intention to marry Dick. But at that time, Dick had lost his job and his reputation in the industry was tarnished. Unless Kelly's family had lost their minds, they would never agree to this marriage. Yet, Kelly seemed to have lost her senses. Seeing her parents' disapproval, she resorted to getting pregnant out of wedlock, attempting to force the marriage. 
Kelly's parents eventually gave in. They didn't have the face to invite my family to the wedding. I learned about this from Kelly's best friend. She sighed, saying, Chuck, how did you and Kelly end up like this? I can tell that deep down, Kelly still cares about you. She insists on marrying Dick, perhaps as a way to spite you. It's her own life. What's the point of coming to me now and saying all this? I replied calmly. Her friend probed, do you really have no feelings left for Kelly? She and Dick haven't officially tied the knot yet. If you change your mind, there's still time. Time for what? I coldly interrupted her, time to take responsibility for the child inside her? What exactly gave you the impression that I would unconditionally tolerate Kelly's recklessness? I thought my insistence on getting a divorce made my stance clear. I don't care if this is Kelly's attempt to test me or your own curiosity. I'll end the conversation here today. I have separated from Kelly, and I will never regret it. I wish her and Dick a happy marriage, but they should lock themselves away and not cause trouble for others. Hey, Chuck, that's not what I meant. I couldn't be bothered to listen to her explanations, so I simply blocked the numbers of everyone who spoke in favor of Kelly. Her so-called good friends. When Kelly and Dick were entangled in their messy affair, not one of them stood up and spoke a fair word. Instead, they kept telling me to be more forgiving, that men shouldn't be so petty. Oh, now they want me to participate in another wedding drama? Who knows, maybe when Kelly and I were getting married, they were also encouraging Dick in the same way. Truly Speechless Chapter 15 Knowing About Kelly's Marriage My mother was a little dissatisfied, thinking that I had lost by falling behind. So she made all kinds of arrangements for me to go on blind dates. I didn't really care. The end of my relationship with Kelly, my childhood sweetheart, made me not want to pursue love for a while. Instead, I focused all my energy on my career and successfully completed several major projects. Smith's stocks rose again. Isn't that better than getting married? I saw Kelly after her marriage at a business banquet. She probably displayed her pregnant belly and walked around with Dick, exchanging pleasantries with everyone. I heard that after marrying Kelly, her family reluctantly arranged for Dick to work in their company. But Dick was clueless about management and, with his self-proclaimed son-in-law status, offended many senior employees as soon as he joined the company. Even the marketing department of Kelly's family resigned collectively because of his interference. This angered Kelly's father to the point that he ended up in the hospital. This business banquet was reluctantly arranged to have this son-in-law and daughter show up together, not only to save face but also to strengthen cooperation. I was seated in the front when the etiquette lady led me forward, coincidentally crossing paths with Kelly and Dick. She saw that I didn't have a female companion by my side, and a hint of surprise flashed across her face. Chuck. She greeted me, but I pretended not to see her and walked past her directly. The banquet ended. As soon as I walked out of the banquet hall, my sleeve was grabbed by a small hand. I turned my head and, to my surprise, it was Kelly. I furrowed my brow, brushed her hand away, and adjusted my cuff. She noticed my actions. Her initially smiling face stiffened for a moment, but then a smile reappeared. Chuck, I didn't expect you to be here too. I looked at her indifferently. Kelly was taken aback by my gaze, slightly flustered, and turned her face away. Are you still holding a grudge against me for marrying Dick? And since we broke up, you haven't been in a relationship. Her words left me speechless. How confident is she to think that I would still care about a married pregnant woman? Am I that desperate? Seeing that I remained silent, she felt a bit embarrassed. I know, it was my impulsiveness to marry Dick. I'm sorry for what I did to you. If you want any compensation, I'm willing to do it. As she spoke, it seemed like she was offering herself, fearlessly closing her eyes. I simply turned my head and walked away. Kelly hurriedly caught up, Chuck, Chuck. Wait. She grabbed the hem of my clothes and choked on her words. I know you hate me, but, but our families have a relationship, can you help me? Chapter 16 it turns out that ever since Kelly's father fell ill, the company has been in chaos. 
Dick is completely incapable of controlling these experienced employees, and Kelly knows nothing about the company's operations. Both of them are on the verge of being sidelined in the company. Seeing that their family business is about to be taken away, Kelly had no choice but to bring Dick to various business banquets, hoping to find someone to help. But now it seems that no one is willing to lend a hand. So why did I foolishly get involved in this? I calmly said, after your child is born, I will give a generous red envelope as a gift. After saying that, I brushed off Kelly and left. However, the next day, Dick actually came to my company. Why won't you help Kelly? He confronted me immediately. I was speechless. Why should I help her? So that's why Dick was nowhere to be seen at the entrance of the banquet hall last night. He knew that Kelly was coming to find me. He felt embarrassed to stay and wait with her, so he left on his own. And this coward has the audacity to come and question me about why I won't help? Do I owe you? Do I owe Kelly? You created this mess yourselves, and now that no one is helping you clean it up, you suddenly think of me? It doesn't work that way. Dick's expression changed, and he lowered his head, gritting his teeth. I admit, I use tricks and schemes to take Kelly away from you, but tit for tat, don't her family have a relationship with yours? In light of that relationship, can't you lend a hand? Seeing that I remained unmoved, he turned red in the face. Chuck. Are you insisting that I divorce Kelly and give her back to you before you're willing to help? I was shocked to hear those words. I quickly called security to escort Dick out. I was afraid that if he continued speaking, I would really end up divorcing Kelly. That's not an option. Chapter 17 But even though I managed to drive away the unreasonable Dick, I wonder if my father helped his family get through this difficult time out of consideration for Kelly's father's face or out of genuine kindness. After this incident, Kelly's father, who had been discharged from the hospital, came to our house to express his gratitude. He held my father's hand, his eyes turning red. My old friend, it's my fault for not raising my daughter properly. She's been too stubborn and ended up hurting Chuck. I apologize to you. I know that when Kelly and I got engaged, it was because we had feelings for each other and because Kelly's father valued my abilities and wanted to entrust the company to me so that Kelly could live a carefree life. But who could have predicted that Dick would suddenly appear and that Kelly would get involved in such an ugly situation with him? Now, this son-in-law of mine should be thankful if he doesn't squander the wealth accumulated by Kelly's family. My father told me that Kelly's father has completely lost hope in Kelly and Dick. Now, his only hope lies in the child in Kelly's belly. The big game has been ruined, and all that's left is to hope for the small game. However, not long after, I heard that Kelly had a miscarriage. And they started fighting about getting a divorce. I haven't heard any news about the two of them in a long time, it was actually my buddy who gossiped to me about it. Do you remember that woman who looks a lot like Kelly by Dick's side? I don't know what got into Dick's head, but he actually keeps contacting her through WeChat. After Kelly found out, they had a big fight. He covered his mouth and chuckled. When my wedding was ruined back then, he had threatened to teach Dick a lesson, but I stopped him. It's hilarious, they made a huge fuss. Kelly, in a fit of anger, went for an abortion. But instead of being affected much, Dick managed to anger Kelly's father again, and now that Kelly's father has woken up, he wants to kick the two of them out. Kelly doesn't want to, she feels that Dick has been dragging her down, and now she's making noise about getting a divorce. I chuckled as I picked up the project proposal on the table. Are you done? If you are, then get lost and stop bothering me at work. Chapter 18 Kelly ultimately divorced Dick. But the price was that her parents were completely disappointed in her and didn't bother with her anymore. After the divorce, Kelly came to my house to find me. She thought that I had been waiting for her all this time because I never got married. Then Nan walked out of my house, raising an eyebrow at her. Kelly, long time no see, huh? Kelly's face turned pale in an instant. She trembled, pointing at Nan and couldn't help but ask in a high-pitched voice, Chuck, are you with her? I furrowed my brow. Does it concern you? No. I won't allow it. She rushed towards me, wanting to pull me, 
but Nan pushed her out the door. Kelly, the world doesn't revolve around you. It's Chuck's freedom to be with whoever he wants. Don't forget, you two have no relationship anymore. Kelly couldn't stand steady and sat on the ground. She twisted her face in pain, but I just watched quietly without any intention of helping her up. Her eyes turned red, tears swirling in her eyes. You go, don't come looking for me anymore. Since you ruined the wedding for Dick, we can never go back to how things were. Kelly's face was filled with remorse, tears streaming down her face. I regret it, can you forgive me? I gently said. Everyone should take responsibility for their actions. Regret alone cannot erase all the harm done to others. Amidst Kelly's crying, I closed the door. Nan waved a stack of documents in her hand, saying, Chuck, the agreement is signed. Please guide me in the future. She had started a successful project overseas in the past two years. However, she encountered some financial difficulties and thought of me. Nan appeared here right after getting off the plane to sign the contract with me. Coincidentally, she ran into Kelly coming to find me, leading to a misunderstanding. She chuckled. It's quite a coincidence. When I returned to the country, Dick was waiting for me at the airport, thinking that I still had feelings for him. Chuck, why do some people only see love and romance? Isn't pursuing a career great too? Nan laughed heartily and extended her hand to me. Luckily, you're not infatuated. Please take care of me in the future. I shook her hand back. Yes, please take care of me too. The future days are still long ahead. 